If you live in Kansas, it might be mid June before all statewide COVID-19 bans are lifted. As you saw live on KNBC tonight, Governor Kelly laid out a four part rollback on state restrictions tonight. Our Chris Ketz was watching along with all of us and Chris, the first phase begins on Monday. Yeah, it sure does. Laura, good evening. Kansas Governor Kelly made a couple of things uh, clear tonight. One, local governments can adopt restrictions that are tougher than what she announced tonight. And two, if positive cases of COVID-19 spike, this plan will change. Here are some of the highlights. Phase one starts Monday. Some businesses can reopen, but that statewide ban on groups larger than 10 people continues. Restaurants can open only if tables are six feet apart. Bars, theaters, museums remain closed. Churches can open, but only if members practice social distancing. Phase two hits May 18th. Groups of up to 30 people will be allowed. Gyms and hair salons can open if they follow industry guidelines. Bars and nightclubs can open, but only at half of their capacity. Non-tribal casinos can uh, open, provided they follow state health guidelines. Phase three, June 1st, groups of up to 90 people will then be allowed. Unrestricted on-site staffing at work will be allowed. And venues able to hold 2,000 people or more can reopen with social distancing guidelines. And the final phase, June 15th, if all goes well, look for a full lifting of statewide restrictions. I don't know if life will ever truly go back to normal. After all we've been through, we will probably think about everything a little differently for years to come. From shaking hands, to going to the grocery store, to how we can take care of our own personal health and how we can take care of each other. But I do know this, we're going to make it through the daunting days ahead. More than 200,000 Kansans have filed for jobless help since this pandemic began, so pressure was mounting in Topeka for the governor to pull back on some straight, uh, state restrictions, that is. For now, the KDHE says that Kansas is either close to or past its peak when it comes to uh, the state's infection rate. Through it all, the governor wants rapid uh, testing, continued social distancing. She also wants to hire more people to find those who uh, may have come in contact with those uh, people who have been infected. I have the governor's full announcement right now on my KNBC Facebook page. Lara, back to you. All right, Chris, we'll talk to you later. Wyandotte County and Johnson County are now both extending their stay at home orders through May 10th. Both counties have decided some businesses will be allowed to reopen on May 11th, but gatherings should still be limited to 10 people. Johnson County commissioners say the extension was done to come to get people from coming into the county to use businesses that are not open in their area. The county's reopening will happen in phases. The first phase includes the opening of retail and commercial businesses, hair salons, gyms and restaurants with restricted guidelines. Wyandotte County has been the hardest hit county in the metro with 55 deaths and nearly 700 cases. The curve there is not flattening yet. KNBC 9's Brian Johnson is live at Slap barbecue in Kansas City, Kansas with what this means for businesses. Brian. Yeah, Laura, many businesses realize if they fail to adapt, then they're actually losing their ability to function. They're losing their livelihoods. Here at Slabs Barbecue in Kansas City, Kansas, they are getting creative about how they respond and the changes that they're making because of COVID-19 so they can keep selling the food people love in a safe way. It's the same great food. Customers now come in with masks. Hi. At Slaps Barbecue in Kansas City, Kansas, oh, they're social distancing and cleaning everything. It was adapt or shut down. They've reworked their kitchen to handle new online orders. Can we take order today? In addition to carry out and delivery. We had to rethink our business very quickly because of the pandemic. In Wyandotte County, the curve hasn't flattened yet. County leaders say after May 10th, they'll consider easing restrictions if there's a 14 day decline in positive cases and hospitalizations. For restaurants, a best case scenario means in at least four weeks, they can reopen dine in to 25% capacity. If things keep going well, in six weeks, they can have 50% dine in capacity. We're going to follow the rules to a T and make sure that we can do our part to flatten the curve and keep everybody going. Cleaning, masks, and social distancing must remain with tables six feet apart. I'd love to be able to get people back in here and uh, sit down and enjoy the culture we have created here in Kansas City with fresh, amazing competition style, Kansas City authentic barbecue. In Kansas City, Kansas, Brian Johnson, KNBC 9 News.
Officials in Wyandotte County say they are coordinating with Johnson and Jackson counties on their reopen dates. The three counties will have a news conference tomorrow morning explaining their reopening plan in greater detail. Kansas City Mayor Quentin Lucas will meet with the city's restaurant owners Friday, and it may not be a pleasant meeting. The mayor's 10 10 10 plan allows businesses to reopen with 10% building occupancy or 10 people allowed inside a business, whichever is greater. And some owners within the city think the 10% capacity limit when they reopen puts them at a competitive disadvantage. Next Wednesday, May 6th, businesses that do not have much public traffic can reopen, such as salons and barber shops. Kansas City, Missouri stay at home order expires May 15th. Now it's important to note the 10 10 10 order only applies for people and businesses inside the city limits, not the entire metro area. Jackson County stay at home order remains in effect through May 15th. Kansas City, Missouri hair salons say they are expecting to be packed for several weeks once they're allowed to reopen on May 15th, but they say it won't be like anything you remember. KBC 9's Alan Chope explains. I feel pretty good about returning. Tucked back in the corner of the Berry Trail Shopping Center. We cannot perform a service without being six feet from you. Salon on Berry owner Joy Battaglia says the challenges have been very real, but she remains cautiously optimistic about reopening. We do miss our guests and we are ready to see them again, but we want to do it in a safe way. The empty salon, just a reflection of what her business used to be. You have the county, you have the state, and then you have the city that's saying all these different things. Joy says every time the government makes another decision, she gets flooded with phone calls. I'm physically calling every client. Those clients have mixed feelings. Some people are still very concerned. And then you have those that are just ready to get back in. Joy says she plans to reopen the salon May 16th, but she admits it will be a learning experience for her and her stylist because they'll be cutting hair in a whole new way. I'm not used to cutting someone's hair or doing a highlight when they're wearing a mask. She adds it's the paperwork in the mayor's 10 10 10 policy that's really going to change the way you get a haircut. We'll go out and take a clipboard with them that will have a release form on it. We're going to ask them a series of questions. No answers equals no haircut. I want them to feel as safe here as they do in my own home. In the Northland, Alan Shope, KNBC 9 News. And Joyce says one of the biggest challenges with trying to schedule everyone that missed their appointments in the last six weeks, getting them back into that new schedule. New numbers for COVID-19 cases in Kansas City and its nine surrounding counties. The area is reporting 105 new cases today. That's the highest daily total in three weeks. Nearly half the new cases are in Wyandotte County. The metro area has more than 2,300 total cases and 135 deaths. Tonight, more trouble for the Kansas Department of Labor. Unemployed people are still experiencing long wait times to get through. An extra challenge, self-employed workers say they're having trouble getting an extra $600 per week promised under the Federal CARES Act. The Kansas Department of Labor has had to build a system from scratch to try and get them their payments. The federal government promised us this money and it's been sitting there doing nothing and we're just getting rejected and rejected every week. We are trying to move as fast as we can on this antiquated system. Uh, we're you know, again, we put band-aids on in past years. This was something we were trying to fix before, but I know the public doesn't want to hear that. Uh, they want to know when, when are they going to get their money and if they're going to get their money um, because they have to feed their families and pay for bills. I get it, um, but I want people to know that we are moving as fast as we can with an IT system. Late today, the Department of Labor says self-employed workers can start applying for help May 12th. The payments will start going out on May 25th. Missouri will be getting federal stimulus funding for housing resources and assistance. Missouri Governor Mike Parson said today in his briefing, Kansas City and several other large cities will get more than $24 million in additional assistance. The state will also receive $9.4 million to help homeless communities. The governor said he anticipates federal guidance on these funds in the next few weeks. Kansas has added two new states to its travel quarantine list. Anyone coming from Massachusetts and Rhode Island after today will have to isolate for two weeks. The others are Connecticut, Colorado, Louisiana, Illinois, New Jersey, and New York. California, Washington, and Florida have been removed from the quarantine list. More COVID-19 cases are being reported inside the Kansas State Prison in Lansing. They're up to 167 positive cases now. 75 are 
our staff, 88 are inmates, 64 people who tested positive are recovering. The prison plans to test all inmates for COVID-19. A former corrections officer at Lansing Penitentiary spoke to our investigative team about quitting his job after 15 years. David Carter just posted his resignation letter on social media saying he was concerned with several things inside the facility. One of the biggest concerns the COVID-19 response by staff members at Lansing. He says he wanted to resign to keep his family safe. It's not a great choice that I have to have. If I have to choose between uh, that level of risk and no income, I guess that's the choice I have to make, right? But the inmates have even less control than that because they can't even choose that for themselves. They're stuck. The Kansas Department of Corrections did not comment on Carter's resignation.